In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to take a look at system of coplanar forces, wherein we will learn the method to resolve a force and the different systems of forces. We have previously learned that a force represents the action of one body on another body and is exerted only when there is an actual contact between the two bodies. Any force is completely defined only when its magnitude, point of application, line of action, and direction are specified. But sometimes, when we are working with inclined forces or forces acting at an angle, it is tough to define the force completely. In such situations, we use resolution. Resolution or resolving a force means breaking the force into parts or components in such a way that when combined together, they would have the same effect as the original force. In simple words, resolution is dividing a force into simple parts such that their combined effect is equal to the original force itself. Consider Tommy's chain is pulled tight by his master. To Tommy, the influence of the chain on his body is equivalent to the force of two chains on his body. One pulling upward and the other pulling rightwards. If the single chain were replaced by two chains, with each chain having the magnitude and direction of the components, then Tommy would not know the difference. This is because the combined influence of the two components is equivalent to the influence of the single force. This is called as resolution of a force. The simplest way to resolve a force is to resolve it into two components along the horizontal and the vertical direction respectively. As seen in the above example, these components are perpendicular to each other. Hence, they are known as the rectangular or perpendicular components of a force. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Now, we will learn the method to resolve any force into rectangular components. Consider a force F acting at origin O. It makes an angle theta with the horizontal. This force can be resolved into components along the x-axis and y-axis. Now let's consider triangle OAB. Sine theta is equal to AB upon OA. Therefore, AB is equal to OA sine theta. But AB is the vertical component of force F. Therefore, the vertical component of force F, Fy is equal to F sine theta. Similarly, the horizontal component Fx is equal to F cos theta. Also, in triangle OAB, by Pythagoras theorem, OA square is equal to the sum of OB square and AB square. Hence, we can conclude that any force and its rectangular components are related to each other by this relation. The above force can also be resolved for the different quadrants as shown. In the above figures, Fx is equal to F cos theta and Fy is equal to F sin theta are known as the components of the force F along X axis and Y axis respectively. In all the above cases, the inclination of the force theta is with the horizontal axis. But if we consider the inclination with the vertical axis, the components will change as shown. Kindly note that we must always check the inclination of the force is along which axis. Also, we must remember that along that axis, the component of the force will be the cosine function and along the other perpendicular axis, it will be the sine function. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. A hundred Newton force is exerted at a 60 degree angle to move a railroad car eastward along a railroad track. Resolve the force into two rectangular components. The force applied to the car has both a vertical, southward, and a horizontal component, eastward. To determine the magnitudes of these two components, the sine and cosine function will have to be used. Since the force lies in the fourth quadrant in the coordinate system, it becomes obvious that the sine function will have to be used to determine the vertical component and the cosine function will have to be used to determine the horizontal component. 
The accompanying work is shown. Now let us consider this problem. A block of 150 kilonewtons is kept on an inclined plane at 25 degrees and we have to resolve its weight force into two components. The block's weight shall act vertically down as shown. Kindly note that when a line makes an angle theta with the horizontal, any line perpendicular to it makes the same angle theta with the vertical. In such a situation, we consider the x-axis to be on the inclined plane and the y-axis normal to it. On solving, we find fx to be equal to 63.4 kN and fy to be equal to 135.95 kN. Therefore, we can resolve the force as shown. Now let's learn about system of forces. When a number of forces are acting together on one body, such an arrangement is said to be a system of forces. The different systems of forces that are used in mechanics are as follows. The two main types are coplanar and non-coplanar force systems. When all the forces lie in one plane, such an arrangement is called a coplanar force system. Consider the man pulling the stone with the rope. There are a number of forces acting on the stone. They are the tension in the rope, the normal reaction offered by the surface, the frictional force and the self-weight of the stone acting downwards. All these forces lie in the same plane. Hence, they form a coplanar force system. When the forces acting in a system do not lie in a single plane, they are called as non-coplanar forces or space forces. Consider the circus tent shown alongside. A number of forces are acting along the ropes of the tent and the self-weight acts along the central pole shown. All these forces are lying in different planes. Hence, they form a non-coplanar force system. Coplanar systems are divided into three types, namely concurrent, parallel and general force systems. In concurrent system, all the forces meet at a point. Consider an electric pole supporting heavy electric cables. If F1, F2, F3 are the forces in the cable and W is the weight of the pole, then these forces form a concurrent system. Now consider a bob is hanging with the support of two strings. Both the strings have a tensional force acting on them and the weight of the bob also acts vertically downwards. These three forces together form a concurrent force system. A set of forces whose lines of action are parallel to each other form a parallel system. Consider a fruit vendor weighing apples. The weight W1 of fruits the measured weight W2, the force F applied by hands to hold the weighing scale, all three forces form a parallel system. Consider this tube light suspended from the ceiling of a room. If we observe it properly, it is being supported by two strings, which are under tension. Also, the self-weight of the bulb acts vertically downwards. Such a system is an ideal example of a parallel force system. In general force system, coplanar forces are neither meeting at a single point nor are parallel to each other, also known as non-concurrent and non-parallel system. For example, the forces acting on the rectangular plate form a general system. Consider the bracket shown alongside. It is connected to the wall using a hinge and a string. An object is kept on the bracket. The forces in the string, the support reactions and the self-weight of the object are all lying in the same plane but are neither concurrent nor parallel. Hence, they form a general force system. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. Resolution of a force is simply breaking a force into parts or components in such a way that when combined together they would have the same effect as the original force. Then, we learned the method to resolve any force into rectangular components. We derived the relation between the components and the actual force as well. We also saw the components of a force 
in all the four quadrants. We also saw that we should always check the inclination of a force is with which axis. We then learned about system of forces. When a number of forces are acting together on one body, such an arrangement is said to be a system of forces. Then we saw the different types of force systems. When all the forces lie in one plane, such an arrangement is called a coplanar force system. When the forces acting in a system do not lie in a single plane, they are called as non coplanar forces or space forces. Coplanar systems are divided into three types concurrent, parallel, and general force systems. In concurrent systems, all the forces meet at a point. A set of forces whose lines of action are parallel to each other form a parallel system. In general force system, coplanar forces are neither meeting at a single point nor are parallel to each other.